It's been dubbed Salvation Saturday, with thousands of people turning out across Brisbane armed with gumboots, gloves and brooms. Australians have well and truly answered the call to help Queensland with a staggering 55,000 volunteers signed up to assist. Now, that is on top of the 1,200 Defence Force personnel who have already been deployed across the state. Here's the latest information to hand, and the death toll does remain at 16. Authorities are planning to release the names of the 28 still missing as the search for victims continues. Volunteers in their thousands are involved in an unprecedented clean-up operation across the state. Defence personnel are helping to send essential supplies to communities still isolated. And the flood crisis has now spread to other states. In Victoria, there are hundreds of homes that have been inundated. The flood situation is easing in New South Wales, South Australia and also in Tasmania. Well, for the latest, we're joined by Sky News reporter Helen Isbister, who's in Brisbane. Helen, you were out and about on the streets of Brisbane today and uh, a great feeling as people got in and uh, helped with the clean-up. Yes, Chris, it really has to be seen to be believed, this amazing community spirit. Of course, we've been hearing all about it. It's just absolutely pervading through every single street in Brisbane. Now, for the official council clean-up alone, nearly 12,000 people were trucked out to some of those badly damaged suburbs, 67 suburbs in all, badly affected by these floodwaters. They were, the council was so overwhelmed by the numbers that they had to turn people away, but of course, there will be work for these people to do over the coming days and weeks. Those numbers, that doesn't take into consideration the thousands more unofficial volunteers who are turning out to help their friends, their family and even total strangers. You walk through the streets and these people are just getting in there, uh, getting really dirty. This is dirty work with rubbish and rivers of mud but they're just helping these people get back onto their feet as quickly as they can. They're the Fluoro Army, thousands strong who turned up at dawn to help Brisbane get back on its feet. Shovels, brooms, gumboots and even high pressure hoses at the ready. So many volunteers, roads all across the city have been choked with goodwill. It's just the Australian thing to do to get out there and help everyone. Anything we can do to help out? One of the first to show up was Matt, who drove all the way from Sydney. We're Australians, we help our mates. That's all it is. Piling onto buses, they began the long road to recovery, deployed to help suburbs devastated by the floods. These African refugees fled war-torn countries for Australia and a second chance at life. When the call went out for help, Bobby Whitfield didn't hesitate. Very similar in nature to what we are experiencing here again. People have lost uh, their everything, just as other refugees from various war-torn backgrounds have lost everything. It's hungry work. A little bit of morning tea. But victims like Leonie Hayes couldn't cope without them. I've had to take everything, all the walls, the ceilings, everything down. <laughs> the enemy is the mud, the mess. Soldiers are going from street to street, trying to restore some order. Mostly clearing the streets is our priority, um, getting the muck off the streets, all the dirt, the silt, things like that, pushing it off to the sides. Precious possessions are in piles. One of the challenges now is working out what can be salvaged. The mud has coated everything in a thick, smelly glue. You want to salvage as much as you can. The flood might be able to wash away our possessions, but it hasn't washed away the community spirit here. The clean-up and recovery from this disaster will take months, possibly years. The most residents can hope for is that Mother Nature leaves them alone long enough to get on with the job. In some low-lying areas, the damage is so severe, houses can't be salvaged. Because the cost of renovating it back to what it was may well be the cost of building a new home. What will be saved is Brisbane's Drift Cafe. Loyal staff and customers have joined forces to restore the famous restaurant to its former glory. Just half of Brisbane have been here and it's just, um, as you can see behind it, it's just it's phenomenal. I just can't believe it. A huge clean-up ahead, but what a phenomenal start. These volunteers are from all walks of life and as I discovered today, age doesn't seem to be a barrier in lending a hand. I'm here in the Brisbane suburb of New Farm with Doon and her dad, Chris. Doon, how old are you? Six and a half. And what have you been doing today? You've got the hose with you. Um, I've been cleaning up. Um, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> it's it's pretty muddy work, isn't it? You've kept yeah. you've kept a little bit clean. Your dress is a little bit dirty there. <laughs> yeah. 
And Chris, so uh, you live around here as well. Was your home affected? Yeah, we live just on the corner here. Um, the floodwaters, we had about three feet of water underneath the house, but um, we've actually been stuck up at Gundawindi, and so we had to get a whole heap of friends to come round and neighbours to, to move all the stuff and move it upstairs for us. Uh, it looks a bit like a bit of a bombshell up there, but you know, we were very lucky in a lot of ways that uh, not too much was damaged. So did you return today? Yeah, literally got home about uh, an hour ago and there was about 100 people all cleaning up underneath the house and in front of the house. It was just amazing to see everyone you know, pitching in. And, and how's Doon doing? She, she looks like she doesn't mind getting down and dirty and helping out in every way she can. No, Doon loves getting dirty, don't you, Doonie? Running, running around in the mud and playing, but uh, no, she's, she's having a great time and very helpful. And what sort of, um, what are you hearing from the other residents around here? There's, there seems to be quite a positive atmosphere at the moment, but this is clean up's going to go on for quite a while, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, just, you know, going through and hosing this stuff, like it just, you, you know, you get it all out of the road and five minutes later, you know, kind of, you come back to the same spot and it's dirty again. So, yeah, it's going to take a while and, you know, like it's even up the hedges and the mailboxes, just, you know, and the drains, it's, it's extraordinary how much stuff's, you know, to be moved. But, you know, also the number of people, that, as you can see, that are, you know, still here, you know, coming on dark, um, helping us get, get ready. So, but uh, pretty soon, because we still don't have any electricity here, we're going to have to go up and get the little ones sorted out, you know, before it gets dark and try and cook them some dinner somehow. Are you shocked by how much damage was done? And Have you ever seen anything like this before in your life? Um, I haven't. I mean, I came from down south and grew up in the mountains, so, you know, to see a flood like this is just extraordinary. And um, watching the images on, on the television as it came down from Toowoomba, because we actually drove into Toowoomba on Monday night uh, when all that was flooding, and just, you know, seeing cars washing down the street and everything, and that's when we actually turned around and went back to Gundawindi and just said, oh, we, you know, this is crazy trying to get through here. So you, when you got here, you'd already seen the devastation that floods could really wreak on a town. Yeah, we're coming through because we came from Gundy um, through Warwick, which got cut off on, what was that, Tuesday or Wednesday, and then um, through Cunningham's Gap and all the landslides there, and then, um, you know, through all the valleys on the way back, um, or through Bow Desert and, and that way coming back. Uh, it's just extraordinary, you know, the damage and the, you know, the fences that have been under and the, um, the watermark on, you know, houses and sheds all the way down. It's just, you know, crazy, just an extraordinary amount of water. Well, I wish you all the best here in the clean-up here, and you're doing a great job, Doon. Keep it up. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, thank you so much. And the Defence Force is also helping out in unprecedented numbers. It's the biggest defence deployment for a natural disaster since Cyclone Tracy. There are 1,200 defence personnel stationed across the state. 600 of them are here helping in the, for the clean-up in Brisbane. It's not unusual to see those army vehicles parked on street corners in the city. And the rest of them are helping get uh, much-needed supplies into isolated communities right across the state. The Lockyer Valley's heart may be broken, but it's still beating. Listen closely, you'll hear it. The thud of Army and Navy helicopters echoes everywhere. They've been here all week. Masked, nameless troops plucking people to safety. Heroes like James English. Comforting babies isn't part of his job description. But what else do you do when you're holding a little life that's come so close to death? I found that uh, quite quite emotional, so uh, that was uh, that'll always be a stick in my mind for the rest of my life. Another helicopter hero, Tony Young, his photo has become the face of this flood. I've got a son who's uh, he's six months now and uh, it just felt like it, was, it reminded me of holding my son. Without a doubt, earlier this week these magnificent machines were the symbol of hope saving lives, but now the mission has changed. They're now helping the search for bodies. Today over Grantham, no adrenaline, no drama. The crew just stare out the door of their seeking, looking for things that no one should see. But they're determined to give grieving families closure. So, uh, I think we're in for a busy time. Many of these troops gave up their holidays to help search through the mud and the mess. The job's far from over. We'll be transporting our, our food, our medication, um, equipment and, and anything else they really need. We're sort of doing our part as, as well as thousands of other people are all, all over the southeast Queensland. The most heartbreaking stories coming out of the Lockyer Valley, of course, Chris, and we're still holding out hope for the tw more than 20 people who are missing there. And this clean-up effort is going to go on for a very long time yet, and it's going to cost billions of dollars with three-quarters of the state of Queensland now declared a natural disaster zone.
A long way to go. Helen Isbister, thanks very much.